number two. Um, this is our picture frame that we used before, and we scaled it to 1125 from the front hub to the rear hub. And now what we're going to try to do is introduce a more organic shape. We built this frame before, uh, and that was part one. Now we're going to introduce the part two bike. So this is the picture frame that we found uh, on the internet. We kind of liked it because of the organic shape. So we uh, aligned the rear hub and the front hub up with the existing picture that we had. So the idea is that those points will stay the same and the new shape will be generated over top of it. So you find a picture that you like and the scale. So I uh, reduced the transparency so that you can see through it a little bit. And now I'm going to lock this. I could lock it with a layer or by an individual. Now that we have it locked, um, we're going to come in and draw our points. Uh, simple curves make better surfaces. So don't machine gun these, but yet have, uh, get it close. It's not sci rocket science. It doesn't have to be exact. And we can come back and edit the curves and make them where we want it to be. Those would be great. And now we'll just continue that around. So we have our curves in here. Notice we have quite a gap here. We'll just edit that in uh, by using the control points. And it edits very cleanly, very easily, and we can get it pretty close. So that's what we're after. Simple curves makes better surfaces. Okay, now we'll move down to the bottom. And uh, again, these are not exactly accurate, but uh, this is a concept bike. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just getting the general shape uh, with our curves, and then we'll edit the curves to what we want, and we'll move forward. Um, I had a, a saying in my classroom, perfecting the irrelevant. Don't spend a lot of time on this. Just get the curves close, call it good, move to the next one. And I think we'll be happy with our results. Okay, we're going to be happy with those curves. Um, now what we need to do is build this shape that we can have uh, some more curves in here. When we take our original curve, we had six or so um, control points. If we offset a la curve through a point, we'll end up with a nice looking curve. But if you take a look at the control points that we have, we end up with a ton of control points and that's just not gonna be usable. So rather than offset, use copy transform copy and so we're going to go up here and copy in the same curve back a little bit and then we will edit that by using its control points again only having uh, a few control points and most importantly the same number of control points if you remember from our earlier videos on lofting in sub D, we want the same number of points. Uh, they don't have to line up, but you need the same number so that we end up with good, clean surfaces. So we'll go ahead and copy the rest of these curves uh, down. Don't offset because you get all these extra points. So we'll just copy each of these and then edit them in place. Uh, to get it to where we want to be so that we end up with a, a an extra division, if you will, 
on our surface so that we can manipulate it and get curves and a nice organic shape when we're done. So we'll copy those three curves and then we'll go ahead and loft them. So now we'll go ahead and go to sub D loft and we'll pick these two curves and we'll go ahead and get a surface and we'll pick these two curves and get another surface and you notice it doesn't line up the way we would normally think uh, because we have reduced the amount of points but we'll just come back in and we'll push and pull to get our points moved around remember shift and control allows you to pick the points to edit so we'll hide these curves just so that they're not in our way anymore. And we'll come in here and push and pull. Uh, gumball works really, really well for this point. Pick the vertex, pull it out. Pick the vertex, or and if you want to grab a window around the vertex as you can, but move the vertex, try not to get the curves lines overlap. And then we'll go tab to move it into the smooth mode and we should go ahead and edit the end of those and put a crease in it to give us a better line. Um, but I didn't do that on the video. But next time I would. Now that we have our basic surfaces uh, to start with, we need to join them together. And you'll notice on this one I have a long edge. This one I have a division in the middle. I need to have the same number of edges, so I need to divide that long one in half. So what I'm going to go do is go sub D, insert edge, and I'll copy this edge, and I'll move it down and place it somewhere about there. Now I'll edit this for control point. Again, using my shift control, I'll grab that point, pull it back a little bit. So that when I blend these two points together, uh, sub D blend, I uh, pick one surface, press enter, pick the second surface, press enter, and it'll blend that together. Now, I can do the same type of thing here. Sub D blend, pick the two edges, press enter, and I get a little surface. And same type of thing here. But what happens is it may have a little bit of an edge that's kind of narrow. So let's move that over so we have more of a gap coming down on the next side. And that one should come out a little bit, be closer to the head tube. I probably would have moved it a little bit more, to be honest. So we'll come back through and we'll bridge these points. Uh, in this case, I need to insert an edge to get that long side again divided up. So we'll insert it to match up with the point across from it. And then sub D bridge and then bridge these two pieces. And we'll do that continuous down. Now I could move that bottom division up a little bit which wouldn't hurt it at all, or I can just do that. Now, we we'll run into a little bit of an issue here where we have our curve, but it's all continuous. So we'll split the curve about that point and then copy it. So just like we did on the rest of it, copy that curve. So I have a duplicate with the same number of points. And now I'll just simply loft that and sub D loft and we'll loft that edge and then we'll blend the rest of it together. 
So we'll go ahead and modify our surfaces, move them to uh, line up with our outside curves a little bit better. And then we'll also try to get the edges uh, to line up a little bit better as well. Um, so you'll notice that we have a long edge here. We'll try to get these two pieces to line up a little bit cleaner. So we'll grab this inside point and we'll move it down. We're going to shift control to grab the vertice and then we'll grab the inside one as well and then move it shift control and that'll give us a little bit better joining um, down here at the bottom uh, we'll want to clean that up a little bit we could rotate it or or in this case we'll just grab the control points grab a window using control points here and we'll move that control point down now we'll go sub D bridge and we'll bridge this piece together and that'll join that side nicely okay now we have another bridge here okay now on this case we have two surfaces on the inside and uh, we only have one, so we're going to insert another edge here. And so now when we bridge this one, uh, it'll work out better. And we'll add another insert edge for the end piece. So there's one bridge, and here's the second bridge. Okay, so that makes a, a better transition around that corner. And we can put it into smooth mode to see how actually that lines up, and that's not too bad. Just however we would like. And we get the shapes pretty well where we want them, which is kind of fun. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab my surface and I'm going to pull it back. That way, my bike frame is independent of my surface. And we'll want to bridge this together. I'm going to need to split that edge or add a, another division in there. So we'll go sub D, insert edge, okay so that splits that one up into two edges, line up with our two edges there. Sub D bridge, one, two, press enter, one, two, press enter. So that looks pretty good. Now let's come back in here and bridge this piece as well. So I'm going to grab this point, pull it back. Sub D bridge. So that looks pretty good. Um, grab the perimeter and extrude that out just a little bit. Give it a little bit of thickness. Now we'll go into the top view and move this to the zero point. And what we'll do is we'll ref reflect the geometry about the zero line. And I'm going to go sub D, reflect, pick the object that we would like to reflect, and then pick the X axis. And then we'll go to the top view and then pick the side that we would like to keep 
and it effectively mirrors it to the other side. 